In today's episode, we're going to solve this geolocation OSINT challenge that was shared on Twitter. For the first part of the challenge, we need to find the business that was behind the individual who took this photo, and for the second part, we'll need to figure out what used to be at the site of the building he's in. To do this, we first need to identify the business or store that we're looking at in this photo. Let's start off by trying to find as many clues as we can with what's in front of us. If we look at these hashtags here, notice this one says geolocation down under. Down under is a phrase that refers to Australia, so this may be a clue for the location in which the photo was taken. If you're not familiar with Australian phrases, you may not have recognized that down under is significant. In that case, you can always do a quick Google search. It's important to remember there can be clues in the text and hashtags of a tweet, and they may not always be in your native language. Moving on to the photo, we can see this logo here on the wall. It looks like some sort of a cartoon fish with a mohawk holding a fishing hook, which could be an indication that this is a sushi restaurant or perhaps a fish market. If we zoom in on the bottom right, we can see an electrical outlet. Depending on where you're from, this type of an electrical outlet may look familiar to you. I'm from the United States and this is not an outlet that you would see in the US. We know that the Australian phrase down under is used in one of the hashtags, so we can search for electrical outlets in Australia to see if we can find a match. It looks like these are a match. Perfect. So far, all signs are pointing to Australia. If we shift our focus to the background, we can see a poster with some sort of a dish, the letters L, U, N, C, which likely spell lunch, the word with, Q on, and the letters L, M, and O. We can make an educated guess that this last word is possibly salmon, given that we suspect this might be a sushi restaurant or a fish market. To the left of the poster is a sign that's rather difficult to read, but if we zoom in, we can just barely see the letters T, C, H, E, and possibly R. We can make another educated guess that this word is likely butcher, which would also make sense if this were a sushi restaurant or a fish market. Going back to this poster, let's assume we weren't able to make an educated guess that this last word is salmon. We still would have reached the same conclusion by searching Google for Huon in Australia. Let's check out Huon's website to see if we can find a connection to our fish with a mohawk. We can see immediately that these logos don't match. The location in our photo could be a retailer for Huon. Let's check the store locator section of their site. Alright, as a test, we have about 100 results just for Sydney, and then another 100 for Melbourne, and that's just for two cities. Combing through this entire locator one by one would be pretty overwhelming at this point, but we can consider this option as a last resort. Let's switch over to social media now and try Twitter's advanced search. We're looking to see if this individual has any tweets that contain the words sushi, fish, huon, salmon, or butcher. We can list any of the keywords we're looking for in this field here. We'll enter his handle in the from field, and since we don't know when this photo was taken, we'll leave the date range blank. It looks like we've got a few results, but nothing relevant to what we're looking for at the moment. Now, at this point, we could continue digging more into his social media to see if we can find any more clues, but we don't have a date range to narrow down our search. If he's someone who's posting multiple times a day, for example, then that's going to be a lot of information to sift through. Sometimes it's necessary to do that, but let's pivot for a moment and try a different approach. We'll do a reverse image search of the photo to see if we can find a match. Alright, there's the logo. Perfect. Okay, so we've identified the store in the photo. The next step is to figure out which business is across from it. Remember, the challenge is to identify the business behind the person taking the photo. When we look up the business, we can see it's located inside of a shopping center. Let's go to the shopping center's website to see if we can find a map or a directory of the shops. We can see there's a list of the stores, which will come in handy here shortly, but there doesn't appear to be a map. If you're ever having difficulty finding something on a website, it may be easier to use a Google search operator, also commonly known as Google dorking. In this example, we'll enter the search operator site colon, followed by the domain, and then the keyword map. With this search, we're telling Google to only return results from this specific website that may include the keyword map. This type of a search isn't always perfect, but notice there are only 6 results versus 300,000 results when we just search for the name of the shopping center. Using Google search operators can be a great way to filter out irrelevant information. Alright, so for this example, we weren't able to find a map or a layout of the shopping center on their site. So instead, let's piece together photos of the interior of the shopping center to pinpoint where this person was standing. At this stage, I searched Google Images for our fish business and I came across the architecture firm that designed the layout of their shop. 
I then found these two photos when I was searching through the shopping center's Facebook. If we compare the photos, we can see these elements from the fish store match. The business we're looking for is right here, but we can't quite make out the name on the sign. The second word appears to be filet, so if we go back to the list of shops on the shopping center's website, we can search for the word filet. And there it is, we've identified the business for the first part of the challenge. Now for the second part of the challenge, we need to find out what used to be at the location of this building. If we search Google Street View for the shopping center, we can look at historical Street View captures. Let's start as far back as possible for this example, which is 2010. We can see there's a Safeway in 2010, and then the Street View jumps to April 2013 with a Woolworths supermarket, which is the same one that's currently there. But we're not quite finished yet. How can we confirm there wasn't something else that occupied that location during those three years? Most likely, there wasn't anything else in between the Safeway from January 2010 and the Woolworths from April 2013, but let's confirm just in case. Any sort of large-scale renovation, demolition, or announcement of a new shopping center in a neighborhood is likely to be reported in the local press. If we Google Thrift Park Shopping Center in quotes, Safeway, and the city, from these first few results we can see this article here, Thrift Park Kingston Local History. The article shows an old photo of the Safeway, a layout of the property, and the last paragraph of the article mentions this site was demolished and a Woolworths supermarket was opened in December 2010 at the upgraded Thrift Park Shopping Center. Okay, so to recap, the Safeway was previously located at the site of the shopping center in January of 2010, and then by December of 2010, the site had been demolished and the Woolworths supermarket opened at the upgraded Thrift Park Shopping Center. That cuts the three-year gap down to about 11 months from January 2010 to December of 2010. Let's also look at historical satellite imagery using Google Earth Desktop Pro. Here's the Safeway in June of 2009, then again in February of 2010. This entire area here has been demolished. The next capture skips ahead to 2012, however we can see that this site was in the process of being demolished in February 2010 to prepare for the opening of a new supermarket in December of 2010. Alright, so there we have it. We've now completed the full challenge. That wraps up this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.